Anyone who knows the violin player Joe Denenzone knows that when it came to getting the Kansas gig, oh, it was easy for this guy. He's one of the newest members of the band Kansas, and he's been called the Jimi Hendrix of the violin. This guy can do anything. Comes from a long musical family. This guy's got skills. In 2023, violinist David Ragsdale announced that he was leaving the band Kansas for personal reasons. And in came the leader of a band called Stratospherius, Joe Denenzone, an accomplished violinist renowned for his amazing technique and performances. An amazing violinist who's been called the Jimi Hendrix of the violin. Joe is from a very classical family. They were all musicians. And as a boy, he studied classical piano and violin. In 79, when they immigrated from St. Petersburg to the USA, he got into rock and jazz. Picked up a lot of instruments, actually. Bass and guitar. And was playing, plugging away at a lot of rock and jazz bands. But his instrument of choice, and the cream always rises, there's always an instrument, right? Was the violin. His band, Stratospherius, has melded into different styles. Eventually being called a prog band which is probably where Kansas heard him play. Technically, he is an amazing player. What's the thing that, uh, what surprised you the most about being in Kansas? They're the most punctual band I've ever been in. If, uh, really? if, the, if the lobby call is 9.45, you gotta be there at 9.30. And if, you, if you're there at 9.31, you get in trouble. <laughs> wow. They're, they're, they're organized as hell. They're, they're a well-oiled machine. Everything happens on clockwork. The dinner, the sound check, the meet and greet, the rehearsal. It's, you know, exactly when everything is happening. Um, and I, I'm good with that. It's it's great, you know. And they, they also are, they're like a family. They really take care of each other. Uh, when Billy, uh, our bass player, lost his wife during the sound check uh, in Tucson, he found out, immediately canceled the rest of the tour. Everyone you know, was was crying with him and, and hugging him and checking on him in the coming weeks. Um, they're good people. They really care about each other. You know, it's not a kind of all about the money show must go on kind of mentality, um, which other organizations might have, you know. So th those are two things, you know, obviously they're, they're all we get along great. The music's incredible. The fans have been I, I was ner the most nervous about that because I'm stepping in to big shoes to fill 50 years of history in that band. Um, they're going to scrutinize me and they might not like me. You know, everybody has, I would say 99.9% .9 have embraced me with open arms. And I'm very grateful for that. Are you still around? Yeah. Yeah. They live in Cleveland. How they, how do um, they look at your career now? They're huge supporters of mine cheering me on. They've, you know, they always supported my interests and passions. You know, uh, I think it took, uh, at some point they maybe thought I would turn around and become a classical musician. But when they realized how serious I and passionate I was about what I did, they kind of accepted it. And they're so supportive. Just, you know, the guys that uh, you looked up to uh, in the early days. Well, for violin, uh, obviously Jean-Luc Ponty was like the, the father or the grandfather of electric violin. Uh, Jerry Goodman had a huge influence on me. Because he didn't, he played gritty. He didn't play perfect. He had this rock and roll kind of vibe to his playing that so many string players are obsessed with everything being perfect and kind of sterile, in my opinion. He just had this wild abandon that spoke to me. And I hadn't heard anyone play that way when I heard him with Mahavishnu. Uh, Sugar Kane Harris, who played with Zappa in the 60s, just the bluesiest, grittiest violin playing. Um, and I, I was influenced by a lot of guitar players because I play guitar too. In Kansas, I, I play guitar as well. Like Steve Vai, Nuno Betancourt, obviously Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page. I think they all influenced my violin playing as much as my guitar playing. Phil Ehart, describe Phil to me. Phil is a um, sweetheart of a guy, Southern gentleman. Um, he is the driving force behind Kansas. Without him, Kansas would probably not exist anymore or maybe even ever get signed or known because he was always ambitious and kind of pushing the band straight shooter um great leader great manager because he he's can stay calm in a storm in, in a chaotic situation and steer the ship which you need in the, in this business so i learned how to 
I'm watching him and I'm learning how to be a leader sure. in a band because things happen even on, on any level, you know. Um, so th- th- those are a few things. And, you know, he comes from a military family, so he's very, um, very, like he doesn't drink. He's very straightforward. Yeah, the people in the, the crew call him dad. He's like, <laughs> he's kind of watching over everybody, you know. <laughs> Remember, subscribe to our channel, share our videos, comment on them, and share the love if you can. We'd appreciate that. If you want early access to our videos, you can join our Patreon. If you want to help out the channel even more, you can make a donation via PayPal. And remember, we have a swag store where we sell t-shirts and caps and coats and a whole bunch of things with that beautiful Rocky Street Music logo. I'm John Bowden. This is Rocky Street Music.